It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It is the year 2021. Globally, all of humankind is still battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, we faced an unknown threat of a debilitating and highly infectious virus that disrupted all areas of human life. Our hospitals were filled beyond capacity. Our medical professionals worked past exhaustion to care for the sick. And we've all lost friends and family who have succumbed to the disease. Our communities responded to the threat by imposing various restrictions on all forms of social activities with deep and far-reaching consequences on our lives and livelihoods. Jobs were lost, entire industries collapsed. We found ourselves isolated at home, unable to connect with the family we love and friends we enjoy. Mental health issues are on the rise. We live in a world in crisis, but the COVID-19 is not the only crisis that we face. For some years now, we have been developing a greater awareness of the negative impact of climate change. Changing weather patterns are threatening the security and stability of our food production systems, and they also endanger the shelter of the most vulnerable in our communities. Society has responded with an effort to transition to cleaner sources of energy, to change our patterns of consumption, and to use materials that are more sustainable and not plastic. In many countries around the world, society is also aging, and the number of elderly now far surpass the number of young people born into the community. We question if there are enough young people who can support the aged and the elderly in their infirmities on top of supporting themselves and raising a family. And this amidst our patterns of work that are increasingly demanding of our time and attention. To the young people listening to this video, it is certainly a challenging time to transition into the adult world. You may have lost a loved one or friends to the pandemic. And, you know, in your grief, question the motivation to go on, to strive. Amidst the isolation, disconnected from friends and unable to meet new people, perhaps much of the joy in life um, is, is not possible for you at this moment. Learning opportunities, have been greatly restricted. Universities and educational institutions have closed their doors and are still struggling to transition to online learning, albeit with uh, not so great success. It remains expensive to pursue an education. And you may be wondering, concerned about the limited job opportunities, because many of the stable and staple jobs that were previously available may have been uh, lost or uh, destroyed because of the various COVID pandemic uh, shutdowns, or they may have been made obsolete by rapid changes in technology, especially brought about by artificial intelligence. I wish to offer you a message of hope by first starting uh, with a vision of what a good life would be. Human beings are social creatures, and at our core, at heart, we thrive and we cherish when we are appreciated, when we are loved, when we are well regarded by other people. So if you were to focus to develop and to uh, create a situation where you can enjoy such regard and relationships, that in my opinion makes for a good life. Work on building a good life, a vision of a good life would be a life with meaningful relationships and meaningful work 
because our work contributes to the well-being of others and to and we create value in society in that way. Now, the crisis that we are facing may have changed a lot of um, a lot of the rules and the way that the world works. Opportunities that once abounded are no longer there. And people we once knew, we once loved, may not be around. But the crisis is also a time of renewal and a time of regeneration. A time of crisis is simply a false recognition that the regular rules of society by which we live by, the rules of work, the rules of life, no longer work. But when they no longer work, this is the opportunity to create new rules, to create new structures in life. And I would like to encourage our young people to look beyond the existing comforting structures towards a future where you can create your own way of life, your own rules, and your own um, systems. I would like to propose five things you can do to set yourself on that path. And they all begin with the letter L. The first, look. Look around you for needs that are unfulfilled. Look around you for things and values that you can provide. It could be a service. It could be a technology. It could be some kind of assistance. Work, jobs are typically created to fulfill a need in society. When many people have a need for a particular service or product, then that uh, becomes a life-giving um, avenue where jobs are created, where work is appreciated and well remunerated. So look around you to see what types of um, needs are, being, uh, are not being fulfilled in your local communities. Look around to see and to find what resources are available. Um, just because um, it is no longer as easy to get uh, parts from a different country or materials does not mean that a particular product can no longer be made. You can think about ways to use the materials freely available around you or abundantly available around you to create uh, new things. So it starts with looking. Second, learn. Continue your journey of learning. And learning happens also outside of schools and outside of structured environments. If you're watching this video, you probably have access to the internet, which is really one of the sterling uh, inventions of uh, uh, human, uh, humankind. We have managed to put a huge repository of almost all kinds of human knowledge, which is now available at your fingertips through the web, through uh, various content created by people, and even through TED and YouTube. Learn as much from these sources of information. Do not be overly dependent on structures such as the university or uh, schools. And try to ask questions, learn from people around you, learn from observation, and learn as much as possible from the experts that you'll be able to encounter. This brings me to my third suggestion, link. Build connections with the people around you. And beyond that, using technology available today, reach out to people all across the globe. Ask for help, ask for guidance. You may not always um, have the answer you require or you want, but if you ask enough people, you will find enough people who uh, will be aligned with your values, aligned with your passion, and aligned with the things you are trying to achieve. And uh, they will be able to, in some, some cases, willing to extend you a helping hand. And that brings me to the fourth thing, luck. Most, uh, perhaps in our modern culture today, um, luck is not fully appreciated because we have grown up in a culture of um, self-reliance uh, on independence that uh, promotes and encourages effort and personal diligence. That is all true and that is all necessary. But uh, a key factor in many successes is oftentimes luck, chance happenings, chance encounters with people, chance encounters with information or knowledge 
that will set you upon a path that will define your life. Be open to the uh, chance and luck and be sure to expect it. And if things don't turn out your way, if you're not lucky, do not be discouraged and recognize that luck plays a big role in thriving and in succeeding during times of crisis. And lastly, do not let the, um, the uh, confusion, do not let the uh, breaking down of structures or rules or the changing of norms around you uh, prevent you from living your life to the fullest. Live, live uh, each day mindfully uh, with some gratitude on the things that you enjoy, the things that you have, with hope in your heart because you are young and uh, live by enjoying what you have and enjoying what you are looking forward to in a better life. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. Let times of crisis be your spring of hope, but not your winter of despair. All the best to you.